If you invest it in savings, you'll be up 0.6%. 401k, Roth IRA, you know, that kind of traditional investment vehicles, 15.2%. If you invest in single stocks, so let's say you want to cherry pick stock, you're into stock market, you want to day trade, you want to make money, then with Apple, you'll be up 29%. With Tesla 4.6, with Nvidia, you'll be rich. You'll be up infinity percent. With be Pokemon, well, with VV Voltage ETB, you now be up 125%. With the Darkness Ablaze ETB, you'll be up 238%. Not people, I'm not joking. Well, I kind of am. These were the things that one of your favorite PokeTuber was saying two years ago. So today, without making fun of anyone, without judging anyone, we're gonna go over what has happened because we know what has happened, something must have happened, and why do these number mean close to nothing? Now, if you're new here, I'm Barrett, I'm your favorite European puggy tuber, and I'm this close to get a degree in mathematics. So today, using some of the knowledge that I learned, and apparently I haven't learned enough because I don't have a degree yet, but again, I'm this close. Stay tuned if you want to find out when I'll finally graduate, at this rate, never. Uh, in our seriousness, let's go over what happened. Let's analyze what that person, which again, I will not mention any names, but if you watch me, you 80%, 85%, you have watched some of his video. And uh, what I didn't like about the video, why, I mean, this obviously makes zero sense. It, it it's saying this and especially saying that with the emphasis that person was, you know, trying to have you, viewer, watcher, whatever it's called, forgive my poor English, have you buy ETBs, saying that ETBs were the way to go based on these numbers and the emphasis in that video. It's kind of like, guys, look, this is data, this is fact, which by all means, these are facts. These things happen. The fact that, you know, Every, every time you look at some sort of a financial advertising, even though I don't know if you can advertise financial instruments and stuff. Any, anyways, anyway, you look at some sort of financial data, you always see, you always hear past performance are not indicative of future performance. It's finance 101, what happened in the past doesn't mean it's gonna happen in the future. If what happened in the past, it's gonna happen in the future, we'll be rich, I wouldn't be wearing this, I'll be wearing Gucci, I'll be wearing Prada, I wouldn't be in this house, I would be in a villa at the Caribbean. I hope we all agree on that. So if you are on YouTube, you're making a video about how, look, this past gains is gonna happen again. Uh, there, there, there's something that's not working. Now, what happened here? So so that address, the emphasis, you know, when if you look at my video, I'm always chill. Uh, I don't, I look at data, I always, I try many times, I try to counter argue myself. Uh, so if you want to counter argue me in this video, feel free to do so, uh, as long as you're being constructive. Uh, so now I say, you know, what, a, what an idiot, uh, shut up. Just, just, let's be adult. So a few other things that I know are wrong here are the fact that, first of all, number of data points. So these is basically are taking these, so one year return, taking one data point is one of the dumbest thing you can do. Why? Well, if you want to prove a fact, so year over year, 50 volts ETB, ETB was up 125%, which again, if it's not clear, we're talking about 222 video. This video was from 2022. Now, taking one data point is one of the dumbest thing you can do if you want to forecast the future. So, when you forecast, you basically, this statistics, follow me. Once you get, let's say the average return, average return, average return, average return, average return, average return. Now, those returns, you take the average, which the average is a practical way to estimate the mean. The mean is a theoretical tool. The mean cannot be calculated. It can only be estimated. It can be calculated in theory not in practice. In practice, you need to estimate it. How can you estimate it? One of the simplest way and one of the most useless for if, if you want to be a pro at it, or at least give it a try, is the sample mean. What's the sample mean? Sample mean is you take 10 returns, you sum all the returns, you divide by 10. That's the sample mean. I'll, 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 
I write it for you. So it, it will be in mathematical terms. So skip 10 seconds and if you don't care about math. So if you don't want to make any money in this business. So it would be one over n the sum t equals one from n of what of the returns returns from one to n we have n returns had it been from zero to n you would have had n plus one data points and you divide it by n that is the sample mean now why do i care absolutely you shouldn't care no it, you should care actually but that's not the point of this video so taking one data point and you can prove this analytically uh, i will not do it because i mean most likely 50 according to my analytics 50 percent of you are already gone if not 60 close to 60 percent of you are gone so if you're still here play fans up it, it means you do care about you, you actually want to learn you just want you don't want the flashy lie the flashy thumbnails you want to learn good for you so taking one data point will give you an estimator error so when you estimate your returns taking a few data points will leave you to error. Now, there's a lot of errors that can be made. What do I mean by that? Again, I will not go into it, but be aware that the way you can make mistake by estimating the mean or the variance, in this case, we're talking about the mean, we're talking about returns, using whatever estimator you want. So this will be a simple mean. There are many other estimators to estimate the means, again, let me know down in the comments you would like them to know in a future video. I'll be happy to, to, to provide them to you, to go over them. There's many type of errors that can be made. Now, that's something you need to know. That's part of why these numbers mean close to nothing. Now, another thing is obviously we didn't consider a reprint. Now, we know that after 2022, these stuff got massive reprints and ETBs that came afterward were printed to oblivion. That's something that person didn't know about. Uh, it could have forecasted the fact of a reprint of this. Uh, it obviously couldn't, I mean, to a degree, like, could have you known that a reprint, I mean, that these type of products could have been printed to oblivion, possibly. Uh, that's why I don't like the emphasis. I don't like the, look, it's all rainbow rose, it's all sunshine, it, it, always, it only goes up, you should buy them. Why? Well, look at these numbers. These are best than any of the best technology stocks. These are better than your traditional investments. These are better versus even cash. Now, a good example, actually, it would be Meta. Right here. This was Meta in 2022. That was your turn. Look at not Meta now. That's a good example of these. If you don't know how you are, they're calculating them, the type of errors you can make when estimating. If you don't know math, which do I know math? Absolutely not. If I did, I would have a degree, I would have a job, blah, 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 blah. But most likely it is possible based on my study that I know more that some of you watching. And for watching me, trying to, don't want to say teach you, but making you aware that there are some things that you may not be aware of the existence of makes me really proud and happy. Thanks for watching. Now, this is a good example why none of this makes sense. Now, what else has been miscalculated? Where one other argument you can make is risk. Now, how do you measure risk? Many times risk, the simplest measure of risk in financial instruments is volatility. What is volatility? Well, well if you talk about volatility every day, you should know what volatility is. Well, volatility is nothing but the square root of variance. What is variance? So, for this example, let's once again use the sample variance. So the sample variance of a return, this is return of, let's say, Apple. The sample variance of the return of Apple will be one over n. I'll tell you what n is. The sum of all Apple returns minus the mean. This is a Greek letter that stands for mu. This is the mean, again, is a theoretical tool. If you calculate the sample variance, then you will need to use the sample mean as an estimator. You take all of this and you square it. Now, t is the return of Apple at times t. n is the number of data points, the number of observations. I'll give you an example. You take Apple, 
returns. You take E returns over 10 years, so N will be equal to 10, right? RT will be the return at times T. You then take the difference with the sample mean of these 10 returns, you square it, you sum it, you divide by the number of data points, you get the sample variance. Now you score that and you get the standard deviation. Standard deviation is referred to as volatility when it comes to finance. That's what volatility is. Does now, as I said in one of my latest video, I <laughs> it'll be uh, interesting to know if your favorite public YouTubers about who talks about investing will know what volatility is. Now, what I was saying is if you take volatility as a measure of risk, you obviously when it comes to vivid voltage, if you want to measure volatility, you can, you need historical data, right? If you want to use the simplest of measure. So the sample mean as the sample variance, you need historical data. What was the historical data available for an ETB of vivid voltage back in 2022? What was the historical data available for Apple, right? So the shorter the time span, the more the error is gonna be made using these two estimators. Now, I know I confused you to your oblivion. I know this is not simple. This is not simple. It, it's not that complicated. There's things that are much more complicated, but my belief is if you put a large sum of money, but actually, if you do put money, if you invest money, I think these are the basic, the fundamentals you should know when it comes to finance. If you treat these as financial instruments, Pokemon, I mean Pokemon, then you should know what these things are. You should know that having not a sufficient number of data points is pointless. You should know that past performance is not indicative of future performance. Obviously, this is not financial advice. Don't get me to jail. Please don't sue me. Um, I'm, this is just me sharing math, which is actually what I would like to do. Merge. Math, mathematics and Pokemon and try to give you all the tools you need to then do on your own for due diligence when it comes to investing in Pokemon. Again, not financial advice, just a guy or average to me sharing mathematics, which is what I've been deciding for too many years now. So that being said, I think this video is already extremely long. I can make it longer. Let me know down in the comments if this is something that could interest you and I would be more than happy to more, go more in depth into the mathematics of Pokemon investing, which is obviously related to your well-known financial instruments. Thanks for watching guys. I remember when someone is yelling, when someone is smiling, when someone is trying to tell you something that seems too good to be true, as you saw, as you witnessed with time, it is too good to be true. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.